Okay, so welcome to the Awakening the Illuminated Heart, a two-hour introductory class as a way to explore some of the ideas that are in the Awakening the Illuminated Heart workshop and to see if it's something that resonates for you and also just to get a taste of Drumbelow's material and also this book here which is Living in the Heart by Drumbelow is sort of a prerequisite to this work and the workshop sort of really picks up where this book ends and so if you end up resonating with this uh, this class then you might also enjoy reading this book. So this workshop, Awakening the Illuminated Heart, is part of the School of Remembering, which Drumbelow Melchizedek founded and back in 2011 when he first created this workshop. Now, Drumbelow has been facilitating workshops since the 80s, and years ago, he uh, was teaching the Flower of Life workshop. And this was a five-day workshop that was uh, intro reintroducing some of the ideas about sacred geometry and Merkaba light body activation and all kinds of really fascinating, interesting stuff about human history and our galactic origins and um, all of that. And what they did is they took that workshop and they made it into books, The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, Volumes 1 and Volumes 2, which many people are familiar with, and they're chock full of really fascinating information. And so this is a bit of a transcript from that workshop. And Drumbelo continued to teach that and he trained facilitators to go out into the world and teach this work as well. And then as time has gone on, the work has evolved and there was then a workshop that he that he taught called the Earth Sky Workshop, which then evolved into the Earth Sky Heart Workshop as the work started to become a little bit more and more about the heart. In the, in the beginning, in order to get the interest of people who were more logical minded as we mostly were back then, uh, he had to kind of lead with sacred geometry. And then as we continue to evolve, now leading with the heart is more interesting. And so people are actually responding even uh, from, from the heart work. So it became the earth sky and then it was the earth sky heart. And then in 2011, Drumbelow was got given the clear to, to create a workshop called Awakening the Illuminated Heart. And he taught that to the world for the first time in November of 2011 in Sedona. And I got to be at that workshop and uh, I was beside myself with absolute delight because I had just really started plugging into him that spring after Fukushima happened. There was like a stir in my soul about like, wake up, it's time. It's time to do whatever it is that we came here to do. And I didn't really know what that was at the time, even though I had lived in the 90s in ashrams in India and had done all kinds of different spiritual practices. I was a little lost at that time. And I started to be like, become a prepper and be like, oh, what, what do I need to do to prepare? And then I kind of got the insight after a few weeks of that, that really the only thing I needed to do to prepare for whatever is coming in our lifetime is to get into my heart. And even though I had said lived in ashrams and done lots of spiritual practices, I knew I didn't have it. Like I wasn't embodying my heart space <laughs> in a really profound way. And a friend recommended reading the book, Living in the Heart by Trumbolo. And I thought, well, isn't he the guy with all that sacred geometry and all the math and all the complex intellectual information? I don't know that I'm that into it. And she said, no, trust me, this is about the heart. It's totally different. So I picked up that book. It's really, you can get through it in about four hours. It's not a very big book, the Living in the Heart book. It's quite uh, short. And so I actually read it cover to cover in one day, and I was just so floored by it. It was like, it resonated as absolute truth to me. Like Drumbolo knew, he meant what he said and he said it in such an honest, humble way that I really heard it. And then he was teaching this Awakening the Illuminated Heart workshop for the first time in November of that year. So when I came to it, my first time in Sedona and with 140 people and all taking this teaching from Drumbolo, I every day I was like, this is the most important work I've ever done. Uh, hands down, this this is it. And so on the last day, when he said he wanted to train 100 people from around the world to be his facilitators, I jumped on that. And I knew that was for me. And I did get to train with him in Mexico for a couple of weeks the following uh, winter in January, and then uh, helped him train 
more facilitators the next year. And since 2012 now, so that's 12 years, I've been facilitating this four day workshop and I've taught over a hundred of them at this time, at this point uh, to kind of well over a thousand people. And it still continues to be the most fascinating, amazing information. And I still love it just as much as ever. I think some of the teachers have gone on to do other things because Drumbelow hasn't been very active in the world over these last years. And so there hasn't been a lot of interest or new people coming in, but I love the work so much that I still continue to do it. I do it online almost once a month. I do it in person occasionally and, uh, and I love it. And every time I do it, I still get ahas and insights and inspirations and the information and the teachings go deeper and deeper. So to me, this isn't what Drumbolo would, would say about it, but my way of just describing this work is it's sovereignty training. Like this is uh, teaching us that we have everything that we need inside of ourselves, that we don't need uh, teachers and gurus, like the time for all that is come to a close as it's time for us to really step into our full power and our remembering of who we are. That's why his school is called the school of remembering, because he says, we know all of this stuff. We're just remembering it. And so we are that powerful. And so the work is designed to give us the tools that we need so that it can be a, in a way, a workshop to end all workshops, because we learn to connect directly with the tiny space of our heart and connect with our higher self and uh, access uh, the Akashic records of anything we'd want to know about ourselves activate our psychic antennas that kind of come out of our head and activate our light body, our Merkaba, which we'll talk a little bit more about later as well. So being somebody who's facilitating this work, I get the luxury of doing it over and over and over. And so these tools and these activations are alive in me in such a way that I haven't just like a lot of the time we'll take a workshop and then assimilate it. And then, okay, I got that piece, move on to the next, like onward, onward. You know, a lot of us spiritual seekers were just like onward, what's the next thing? What's the next level of learning? And I still do that for sure, but I'm, I'm anchored here. And I can say without a doubt that these tools are the most profound ones that I have and have helped me beyond anything, just the piece of living in the heart and really getting into the heart space and not living in the duality of the mind is uh, one of the most important pieces, as well as having the Merkaba activated and having the connection to the higher self. So I could gush about it all day. <laughs> you get the idea. I'm a big fan of Drumbelow, of the work, and how it has uh, really benefited my life. So feel free to chime in if you have any comments at any point. So let's talk about this idea of uh, living in the heart as opposed to living in the mind. And this way I was saying is one of the biggest key pieces. And if we understand that we're living in a multidimensional reality and we are existing here in the third dimension, then but we're also existing in the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, the sixth dimension onward, we are multidimensional beings. So we are existing multidimensionally at this time. Like we're not just one station on the radio, we are the radio and we can tune into any station we want, all the broadcasts are happening. And if we understand that we are uh, living multidimensionally, then we will understand that here we are in third dimension. We have this form that is like 90% matter and 10% light where these dense beings that are five to seven feet tall. Well, we're also existing on the fourth dimension. And according to Drumbolo on the fourth dimension, we are 12 to 15 feet tall and we are 90% light and 10% matter. So it's like a little reverse. There's a little duality still in the fourth dimension, but there is a lot less. And we on the fourth dimension is what we often would maybe call our angel or our guide. And now we can have angels or guides that show up that are not ourselves. And I personally don't work with any of those. I, I feel like this is a realm that has all kinds of smoke and mirrors and tricks and trinkets. And I, I don't engage personally with other entities or beings presenting as archangels or anything like that. Um, that's just a personal choice. But one thing that I feel absolutely certain about is the connection with my own higher self so that I can connect with the aspect of myself 
that is functioning at a higher frequency and doesn't have the blinders on that we have here in the third dimension. So somehow or another, we all agreed to be here, to come into this realm of density, whether by coercion or by choice or whatever it was, we get mind wiped and we don't necessarily uh, get to remember who we actually are. We don't retain our memories from the past life into this one. And so we have these blinders on where we're running blind and we don't know why we're here, where we came from, where we're going. If we can make the connection to our higher self, then we start to get the answers of exactly who we are, what we're doing here, why we're here. Because our higher self didn't come down beneath this frequency fence or whatever it is to be here in the third dimensional realm and doesn't have the blinders on. They know exactly these things. So it's a really beautiful thing to make a connection to the higher self. And we actually start out the four-day workshop with an opening ceremony to connect with our higher self. And then we build that connection over the four days so we can really learn to listen to this still small voice within. Uh, and so for me, it's like I have myself, my higher self and source, direct line. Like I don't need anything else outside of that direct line so then I don't get caught up in uh, paths that may or may not be tricky or for my highest good. So it's just kind of worth mentioning there about the higher self. And another thing is about that I was starting to talk about the li living in the heart as opposed to living in the mind. So if we are living in our mind, which is very common to do, so we have been taught from a very early age to be in our mind, like the whole indoctrination that happens with schooling is to keep us out of our creativity, keep us out of our heart, keep us out of our imagination and be in the mind, be in the logic. And it's, it's a training that we all go through. And so most people at this time are living in their minds and are oriented there and acting from there. And the mind is a place of duality. And, and we'll get into that as to why. So if you're living your, your life in your mind, then you are living in duality. And this duality plays out all around us in that like we're living in a world that's full of duality. So the mind actually really is a perfect tool for this dualistic realm. It's designed just to be a task doer to help us uh, do our tasks, maybe as the heart would define, but instead it's in charge. If you ask most people, like, where are you? Like, if you're not your body, but you're inhabiting your body, you are a spirit and you're inhabiting your body, where are you located? Like, where in your body are you oriented? So take a moment right now to close your eyes and tune in. Like, I am not my body, but I am a spirit inhabiting this body. Where am I? Where is my anchor point? And you might visualize it like the size of a marble or a little flame or a crystal. It's about that big. And see if you can get a sense of that. This is your spirit center that's inhabiting this body. And like I said, most people will say that they're in their mind because we talk from here, we see from here, but also we're trained to be in the mind and orient ourselves here. But you don't need to be oriented there. People can be oriented in any chakra or in anywhere around the body. I know uh, in Carlos Castaneda's books, he talks about having the assemblage point, which is the same thing over the shoulder outside of the body. And people could have it outside in front of them for protection or be in any other chakra. And this is what inhabits the body. And so if you're anchored in your mind, then you are living your life in the mind. And if we understand that we are at least on some level creating our reality, whether it is just a co-creation with whatever has created the simulation and it's a joint effort, or if we fully create it, either way, if we're creating our life and we're anchored in our mind, then by default, we're gonna create a reality reality from the mind based on duality. So this is a huge piece and, and key to remember. So even as you just walk, even if you're not trying to consciously create, you're just walking about in your day, living life and you're in your mind, then that's what is gonna reflect back in 
to you, right? Because if this is a hologram or a simulation, as most things point to, then we are creating it uh, by our frequency and the frequency match that we have to, to what we create. So then the idea is to be, what happens if we are living in the heart? That's the whole point of this teaching. And the heart is not based in duality. The heart is in unity consciousness. It is oneness consciousness. It is a portal to connect us to the source of all that is beyond this matrix, that is beyond this simulation, that it, it's everywhere for sure. Like that, that energy, that source is all over everything. But because we have this template laid in front of this simulation of this matrix, then it's hard to tune into that. And the, the most straightforward, easiest way to do that is through a portal in the center of the heart, which connects in to the unified field. And everyone plugs into this point, this unified field point. And if we are anchored here and living from this place of unity consciousness, then we're not in duality. So we're not gonna create our life whether consciously or even unconsciously as we're just going about our day, we're not gonna create it from duality. And this changes everything because when we are in our mind and we are in duality, then life is like a roller coaster. And so every any creating that we do, we will get exactly what we're trying to create because this is a simulation, we can create it. And doing it from the mind, we're like, okay, I want to manifest this thing. And we actually do manifest it. And we're like, okay, I'm a really good manifester. That's awesome. But what we don't realize is that because we're doing it from the mind in duality, we'll create exactly what we want. And we'll also create exactly what we don't want. That's the balance of polarity. That's the duality. And people can spend their whole life spinning in the roller coaster, up and down, up and down, and not realizing that the, the negative thing that also happens after they've got the good thing that they're trying to create is a direct result of the good thing that they're trying to manifest. So once we get into the heart and we learn to create reality from there, then the creations are not in duality and they don't have a negative aspect. Unity consciousness is not even just the neutral point on the scale of polarities. It's not like positive, negative, and then neutral in the middle, and that's unity. That's just on the same scale. Unity consciousness is something else altogether, and it's like joy and bliss. And so when you're in this place and creating your life from here, the kind of creating that you do doesn't even need to follow logic. Logic's of the mind. And so any creating that we do from the mind has to follow logic. Like say there was a drought in your area and you really wanted it to rain and you're trying to do a creation, a manifestation, thinking rain into being, you know, with a vision board or with your thoughts or your affirmations, all these things that think things into creating. You might create that rain but then maybe too much rain comes and floods your area and, or a tornado comes, like it's like, you're gonna get the polar balanced point. But when you're creating that, you won't see rain come out of a blue sky because that's not logical. And the brain only functions with logic. And so the, rain, the clouds will roll in and then the rain will happen. That's logical. The creating that we do from the heart is the realm of what we would call miracles. And they're not necessarily miracles. They're just creating from the, the unified field in the simulation where we can create anything that we want and it doesn't need to follow logic. So this is a big piece and we talk a lot about it in the four-day workshop, but it's really worth uh, mentioning here and, and talking about the value of why living in the heart. Any comments? No, I totally agree with that too. And um, it's funny because I was just saying that to my mom because she was telling me she was having a really bad day today and she was all angry about stuff. And I'm like, I, I think that you need um, a breath work. I feel like breath work would really help you, you know, and to get into your heart. I said that to her just like 10 minutes or before this thing started, I was telling her that. I'm like, you should come to this workshop I'm doing, but it was too late. But no, I totally, totally agree with that. Lovely. Well, I'm going to create a replay out of this so you can share that with her <laughs> later. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, the, the practice of living in the heart that Drumbolo shares in this book, you know, there's a method and we're going to do a meditation today in this class to actually go into the sacred space of the heart. And once there, 
it's an anchoring, right? It's because we're so used to living in the mind, then how do we get out of the mind and get into the heart? And so there's lots of different ways to do that. There's more masculine ways that are logical and like you can actually ride the toroidal feet, like these are your toroidal field that comes out of your heart and it's eight to 10 feet in diameter mapped out by the heart math institute and a logical way to get into the heart would be to take your spirit center your consciousness and just ride it down in on one of these toroidal lines that go right into the heart and get in that way there's also feminine ways to get into the heart that are more using intuition and just changing images going down into your physical heart and going okay i'm going to go to my sacred space on my heart now and boom you're there so there's different ways to do it. And two ways are mapped out in this book, and the masculine way and the feminine way that I just kind of gave brief introductions of. And you can actually find those meditations on YouTube. There's a CD that's in the back of the book that comes with this, but of course it's been uploaded onto YouTube by this point. And so if you type in drum below female way or drum below male way, you can find those meditations uh, to go into the heart. So what I wanna share with you today is a way to go into the heart that's not in the book. That is something that he found years later after writing the book and another, a third way into the heart that everyone can do because some people can do more the masculine, more logical types of meditation and some people can do the more feminine. And so in the beginning, he had these two different ways and you had to figure out which one worked for you. But this new way kind of works for everybody. So we'll get into that in a little bit and practice doing that so that we're actually moving from the mind to the heart. And so it becomes a real experience rather than just imagining that we're doing it because it is possible to just stay in your mind and and think that you're going into your heart, but do it from the witness, like here, and like almost like watching a movie of watching yourself go down into your heart and never leave the heart, I mean, never leave the mind. So the act of actually traveling inside the body helps us to make it real so that we go into the heart. So this idea of traveling in the body is unusual, but really it's it's quite familiar. Like think about when you stub your toe, but whoosh, like all of your energy just kind of goes into your foot and there you are in your foot, like processing the pain or whatever. So this idea of moving around inside the body is like that, that we're traveling inside the body with our spirit center, what that we just closed our eyes and we tuned into like, where am I? And that you might visualize it like a little glowing sphere or crystal or something. That is what moves inside the body to go from the mind to the heart. And it, the, our spirit center, the idea of the spirit center is that we are finite beings right now because we have this form that expires and then we forget and then we start all over again and we're on the recycling of reincarnations. And if we um, are finite, then there is a point that is the center of our being. If we are in our infinite nature, infinity has no center. But since we are in our finite nature right now, there's that center point. So that will travel down the body. And for the sake of doing the exercise, wherever you might be located, we'll have everyone start at in the center of the head because we're all so familiar with that through growing up in our culture. And specifically the pineal chakra, which is in exactly the center of the sort of the brain area, put all those points together in there is your pineal chakra. And that's the most common area to feel that you're oriented. So we'll do a meditation where we actually will move we'll from this point down our head and into the throat and then down into the heart area. And we're gonna use a method to go into the heart that Drumvolo calls the Jesus way into the heart because he found some old Gnostic texts which has, which has a lot of uh, deep hidden wisdom. And in that Jesus was talking about the sacred space of the heart being at the back of the heart. And so the sacred space of the heart is what we're talking about going into, not just the heart chakra, not just the heart center, a very specific sacred space of the heart. And in the Upanishads, they talk about this space and call it the sacred space of the heart. It's, it's something that's not discussed in too many places in the written word. There's like a few books here and there that discuss it, the Upanishads being one of them. And so in these Gnostic texts, there was Jesus mentioning the sacred space of the heart at the back of the physical heart. So Drumbala went exploring 
And what he found was that at the back of the heart, there's a doorway, like a portal or a stargate. And at, it's like at the back of the actual physical heart. So you travel down in your body till you are behind your heart. And then looking, feeling, or sensing your heart in front of you, you would look for a crevice or a fold in the heart and a small spot at about the middle. That's like a little spinning vortex or a portal or a stargate. And you move your spirit center into it. And that's the doorway at the back of the heart. So it's very common in the, in the past, all the information wasn't given in these mystery schools, just like hints of it. So that would keep it for people who were really ready to process it. So partially the information was given or it was at the back of the heart, but it goes beyond that. So then you start traveling once you enter in through this portal at the back of the heart. Now you're leaving the physical realm and you're going into your inner space and you're traveling down a tube or a tunnel, traveling inward until you land in the sacred space of your heart which is a place that is very unique to you. It is like your inner temple, your inner sanctuary. And it's a very holy place. And there shouldn't be other people there. You can be there. Your higher self can be there because your higher self is you on a higher level. And sometimes a spirit animal or two can also show up. But other people shouldn't be there. It's like your inner sanctuary. And there's a feeling when you enter into it. And that's how I'll know that I'm there. Even if it's not a visual experience, there's a felt sense of going into this place and feeling like you're in a holy place. Like when I've been to Egypt and I've gone to some of these ancient temples, like you walk in somewhere that people have meditated or prayed for thousands of years. And it's like, you almost get goosebumps on your skin. You can feel it like I'm in a holy place now. And so it's like that when I go into my sacred space of the heart, I feel like I've entered into a holy place. And that's how that you know that you're there. Another way that people know that they're there is that there is a vibration or a frequency in this place. And in the Upanishads, they talk about this as the, the Om, the, the vibration of Om, that it is the primordial sound that is older than the manifest universe itself. And, you know, in the beginning was the word is maybe a mistranslation. In the beginning, there was frequency or vibration. And then there's even the, the history with the Hathors, who like, like the crack of the sistrum, like the rattle is what sets creation in motion, right? So in the beginning is the frequency, the vibration. And some people will actually feel that in their sacred space of the heart. Maybe it's a sound that you hear as a frequency or a tone or a note or a humming but it may also be a feeling that's like more like a vibration. That's what I personally feel when I go into my heart. It feels like I'm in a holy place and it's like a, uh, like a, almost like a buzzing, but not necessarily an audible sound. But I can take that sound, that feeling, and I can translate it into sound. And that's what I will invite us to do when we go into the heart is actually feel into that vibration and see if we can make the sound with our voice by humming it. Like when I go into my sacred space of my heart, that's my note. And it's always that note. And every time you go into your heart, if you make that sound, whatever your sound is, maybe a different sound, you got to know it. And then you can use that sound to bring yourself back to your heart anytime that you want to which is an amazing shortcut because there's a, like a 10 minute meditation that we're going to do to get into the heart. And in the future, once you know this place and you know the sound, then whenever you're out in the world and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so not in my heart right now. You're in line at the bank or you know, you're doing something that's a little stressful. You can sit there and just quietly start going and bring yourself, you know, right back to your heart. So I kind of think of it like a homing beacon and it's a nice way to, Bring yourself back. And if you don't have a sound when you get into your heart, then you can actually just start making all the different notes in the scale. Find the one that resonates your heart. Like you almost will feel a certain note will just bing, really resonate this and vibrate it. And then you'll know that that's your sound. Any comments on that? Okay. So, uh, we talked about the steps to go into the heart. This is the Jesus way or the Coptic way into the heart. And one thing that needs to be done before going into the sacred space of the heart 
is connecting with Mother Earth and Father Sky with love. Now, this is something that Drumbolo noticed that indigenous people all around the world, before they go into sacred ceremony, they all connect with Mother Earth and Father Sky first, before going into the sacred space of, of the heart. And so Drumbolo's understanding of Mother Earth is that she is the living planet that we live on. She's alive, conscious. She's given us everything we have, right? She's this living being. So that's Mother Earth and all the living beings on her body. We're all a part of Mother Earth. And then Father Sky or Father Sun is everything else in creation, all life everywhere. So if you actually feel love and send love to Mother Earth and then feel love and send love to Father Sky, that's a lot of love that kind of covers everything. And it's like that sets a frequency in our field and in our heart that is a key that will unlock the door that will allow us to then travel down and in and go into the sacred space of the heart. If you don't have this vibration running in your spirit, then it's not as easy to enter. So it's a little bit of pre-work that we do to get the frequency just right and aligned so that if we're a vibrational match to going into the heart. So we're going to do that first. And that's about a five minute meditation that Drumbolo calls the unity breath or the holy trinity vibration because it's like if you have a holy trinity like a triangle on one corner is the divine mother the other is the divine father and then there's us the divine child and so there's a the unity of all three um, is the un the holy trinity vibration and we feel all that love in the heart and then we'll go in once inside the sacred space of the heart the first thing that we're going to do is ask for there to be light. So let there be light. It's the first thing that we say. Very often when people go into the heart, it's in darkness because the brain sees with light. And in the beginning of journeying, at least into the heart, we need darkness because the heart sees in darkness. And so it'll, it's very often dark when we first go into the heart. So let there be light. And maybe that light comes on right away. Maybe it waits a little while to come on. It might come on in a half an hour or even the second or third time you do the meditation. It might be like psychedelic light. We just ask for there to be light and then we just let go of it. We, then we let the experience be what it is in the heart, whether we get the light or not. So it's not always a visual experience because if you're in dark, then it's not necessarily going to be visual, but not everyone's visual. And to me, more important is the feeling that you feel that you're in a heart. There's a sense here that you're inhabiting your heart space. And it, there's like a sense of warmth and openness and expansion and love energy. And we could still be in our mind and feel love. And that's love based in duality because it's love of the mind. And so there'll always be some love and like some love and some doubt, it's love and some judgment, love and some fear. In the heart, there's only love. And so that's one way to know if you're there or not. Am I only feeling love? Is the feeling open and expansion, expanded instead of contracted and contained? You know, because we could stay in the mind, think a loving thought, and then just watch ourselves go down into the heart and like it's a movie and it's not real. So we're going to actually move into the heart and do it that way. And then once there, after we get set up in those ways, and we've asked for there to be light, whether we see the light or not, we have felt into the vibration, then you're in this place. And then you get to explore your inner sanctuary. And very often when people first go there, they're like, oh, this place, I know this place. I've been here before. I hear that all the time. And often people will stumble upon it, like when they're in a beautiful ceremony or they've had a loving experience or they've done a deep meditation and they find their way there by accident almost. So what we're doing here is carving out a reliable pathway so that you can get there anytime you want. And then you can kind of set up camp here and start to actually live from this place. So, and then, so, so once you're there, you can explore it. Is there a temple? Is there um, nature, a meadow? Is there writing of information of your past lives? Are there crystals on the ground that are record keepers that can help you to remember your past? All the Akashic records, they're all there in the sacred space of the heart. It's the place of information. You can find out anything there. So it's like being in your own inner temple. And, and so a beautiful place to explore. So questions on any of that?
so I want to emphasize that this is a crash course <laughs> for sure. You know, we do a four day workshop where we really flesh all of this out and we practice numerous times going in and then Q and A and troubleshooting. And yet I have found after doing these two hour intros for so long that people get it, you get it to whatever d degree you get it. And uh, for years I would teach this two hour class at different like consciousness festivals on the West coast when I lived in Oregon. And people will come up to me years later and say, you know, I learned, I learned that meditation from you at that festival, you know, eight years ago, and I still do it and I still have it to this day. And so I know that people can get it even with this little two hour class and that the two hour class is valuable unto itself, whether you ever were thinking of coming to a class, the four day class or not, just to get this piece is lovely. So let me check the time here. Okay. We are so right on track with time. Um, we're going to do the whole meditation and we'll do, we'll do something where we, I, I talk us into doing the unity breath, connecting with love to mother earth and then connecting with love to father sky. That's how we're going to start it. And I'll talk us through that completely. And then we'll do the orienting ourselves in the head and then traveling down inside the body and then going into the sacred space of the heart. And then once there, I'll leave you in the meditation for about 10 minutes so that you can really explore and get to know this place. And then at the end of the 10 minutes, I'll come back in with further instructions because we don't want to come out the way we went in, right? We don't want to then go back up to the mind and be like, okay, I'm living back in my mind now. Like the idea is to live in the heart. So we want to anchor ourselves here and as we come out of the meditation. So I'll have specific instructions for that. So what I want to do now is let you have just a few minute break so that you can use the restroom before we do the meditation and find something that you can use as a meditation mask. It could be just a scarf or a sleeping mask or even a hat that you tuck over your eyes because as I was saying, the brain sees with light and it needs the light in order to see and the heart sees in darkness. And light entering the eyes actually stimulates the brain functions and it makes the brain active. So the more that we can be in dark and shut that down, then we have an easier time going into the heart. In these workshops, we work with a specific meditation mask called the Mindfold that uh, Drumbolo has all of us get for everyone because it gives you 100% darkness. And so, uh, but for today, just use whatever you've got. So I'll give you a couple moments till you come back and uh, get set up for meditation. You can even turn the light off if you don't have a good mask and shut the curtains. And I'll see you in a cut, like two or three minutes.
Okay, welcome back. I'm going to get set up for meditation. And you just want to be able to sit with your spine straight. Don't cross one leg over the other or one arm over the other, unless you're sitting cross-legged in a balanced way. But if you're in a chair, don't cross one leg over. And then when you're ready, you can put on your mask and adjust it so that as little light comes through as possible. Take a moment to get settled and relaxed. Start to take, start to take some nice, slow, deep breaths, slowing the breath down into a nice, relaxed rhythm. And so first we're going to connect with Mother Earth. So what I'd like you to do is to imagine a place in nature that you know and love and find beautiful, like a real place that you've actually been to before so that you can imagine everything about it with all of your senses. And imagine as if you are there right now. Letting all of your senses engage, like what does it feel like on your skin? What is the feeling beneath your feet? What do you hear in the distance? What do you see? What does it smell like? Just let all of your senses respond as if you were in this place in nature that you love. And feel the way that your heart starts to respond when you imagine and feel that you are in this place. Feel the love that you have for this place. And feel the love that you have for all of nature. Feel the love that you have for Mother Nature, Mother Earth herself, the living spirit of the earth who has given us everything that we have, even our bodies. And really feel this love that you have for Mother Earth in your heart. So you're not just thinking about it, but you're feeling it in your heart like a, a felt sense of love and warmth going toward Mother Earth. And then take all this love that you're feeling in your heart and place it into a small sphere in your heart. It's like a little packet of love. And you're going to send this packet of love from your heart down your body into the earth. It's like, I love you, Mother Earth, and you send her your love. And you feel this love move through the surface the crust of the earth, moving down through all the layers of the earth. And you send this love all the way to the center of the earth, to the heart of the mother, where she will feel and receive your love. And then you open yourself to receive her love as she sends it back to you. And she always will because she's our mother and she loves us so much. And so you just open yourself to receive this love. And you feel this love from Mother Earth rising up into your body from below. 
and just say yes to it and let it in. And let this love move through your whole being. Let it nurture you and let this love go wherever it wants to go. Your physical body, your emotional body, your mental body, your spiritual body, your light body. And let yourself be nourished by this love from Mother Earth. And feel yourself connected heart to heart with Mother Earth. Just take a moment to link this with your breath, where you're breathing in the love of Mother Earth on the inhale. And then on the exhale, you're sending her your love. And now you're going to keep this love flowing between you and Mother Earth. Just let it go on autopilot for a few moments because now we're going to put our attention on a night sky. And imagine and feel as if you are standing outside under a clear sky at night. And you're looking up and you see the stars, the Milky Way stretched across the sky, You feel the incredible depth of space. And feel that sense of awe and wonder you have when you look up at the sky and the vastness of it. Feel the love that you have for all life everywhere, all of creation. Feel the gratitude that you have for being alive and being part of this whole thing. And feel the love that you have for Father Sky. Take all this love that you're feeling in your heart and place it into a small sphere in your heart. Really feeling love for Father Sky in the heart. And gathering all this love together into this sphere. all of creation. And then you're going to send this sphere of love from your heart up and out the top of your head, up into the sky, up into the heavens where Father Sky will feel and receive your love. You can send it to the sun or the great central sun or the consciousness grids around the planet, if you know about those. Or you can just send it to the heavens. And either way, Father Sky will feel and receive your love. And then you open yourself to receive his love as he sends it back to you. And he always will, because he loves us so. And you feel this love enter into you from above. And let it move down into your body, through all of your bodies. Going wherever it wants to go to nourish you.
and feel yourself connected heart to heart with Father Sky. Breathing in the love of Father Sky on the inhale and sending your love to Father Sky on the exhale. And now add back in the awareness of Mother Earth as well. And feel yourself pulling in the love of Mother Earth and Father Sky on the inhale from both directions and the love meeting in your heart. Also feel the love that the mother and the father have for each other. feeling the love that you yourself have for Mother Earth and Father Sky. And also feeling the love that you have for yourself. As this creates the Holy Trinity vibration. The Divine Mother, Divine Father, and you, the Divine Child. All in unity, in the heart, in the breath. And now that we have established this Holy Trinity vibration or this unity breath, we are now ready to make the journey to the sacred space of the heart. So I'd like you to bring your spirit center, your center of awareness to the center of your head at your pineal chakra and orient yourself so that you are there. And there's something about vantage point, right? So you're in your head right now. And because this is where your vantage point is, you can actually feel the skull surrounding you. So take a moment to feel the skull surrounding you. There's a feeling when you're surrounded by it. And now you're going to take your spirit center about the size of a marble and you're going to travel down your head until you get to your throat chakra. Maybe it's a visual thing and you can see yourself moving down a glass elevator or walking down a glass staircase. Or maybe you're feeling your way down, almost crawling or feeling, sensing your way. Either way, move with your spirit center down your head until you arrive at your throat chakra. And then once there, stop and feel what this place feels like. It probably feels very different than being in your head. And your vantage point is there now in your throat. So it's where you would be seeing and perceiving from so just play around with this idea of vantage point that you are where you are perceiving. And now we're going to let go of this place and continue moving down into the chest area until you are behind your heart, slightly on the left side of your body, and you're at the back of the heart, at about the middle of the heart. And you're seeing, feeling, or sensing your heart in front of you.
tuning into the heart in front of you. Look, feel, or sense that there's a crevice or a fold in the physical heart at about the middle. And at about the middle of this crevice or fold, there is a small spinning vortex that usually appears as a dark or a light spot. So it's a little spot in this fold. And you're gonna move with your spirit center closer to this spot. This spinning vortex. It's like a whirlpool or a vortex. And when you get close, it will just pull you into itself. And you spiral in to this spot, or maybe you just move right into it. It pulls you in magnetically. And we've now moved in through this doorway at the back of the heart, or this stargate, this portal. And we're now moving into our inner realm. And you may find that you are moving down a tube or a tunnel, traveling inward to your inner space. And you keep moving until you come to a natural stop, at which point you will be in the sacred space of your heart. Once inside the sacred space of the heart, if it is dark, ask for there to be light. And remember that the light might come on right away or it might not. Either way, you just ask and then let the experience be what it is. The next thing that we're going to do is feel the vibration or the frequency in the heart, the true ohm. Maybe you hear it like a sound, or maybe it's a feeling as if you're in a holy place or something that almost would give you like goosebumps on your skin. If it's a sound, just make the sound with your voice. And if it's not a sound, you can start to explore different sounds to you find the one that matches it that resonates the heart and everyone is muted so feel free to just make whatever sounds you like and see if you can find a sound that matches your heart or matches the feeling or frequency that you're experiencing in your heart the easiest way to do this is by humming it And you can stop humming the sound whenever you feel like you've got it. And so I'd like to just invite you to stay in the meditation for about 10 minutes and explore this place. Get to know your own inner temple. See what is here for you in your sacred space of the heart. And I'll come back in in 10 minutes with further instructions.
So take about one more minute to complete your meditation in the heart. So we're getting ready to come out of the meditation in the heart. And what I'd like you to do is stay there. We're not really going to come out. We're just going to layer in the external world into our experience so that we actually stay in the heart, even while we're then engaging with life around us. So what I'd like you to do is anchor yourself in your heart your experience of being there, you might even like to take your hand and place it on your heart as a way to anchor yourself there. And then start to tune into the room around you. So first feel the air on your skin as you start to tune into the external world while still staying anchored in the heart. Listen to the sounds in the room around you. So we're just going to keep layering in the external while anchoring in the heart. So with your other hand, you can slowly start to take your mask off, keeping your eyes closed, and just let the diffuse light enter in through your eyelids. Breathing into your heart. When you're ready, you can Slowly open your eyes and just look around your room a little bit while breathing in and anchoring into your heart. So that we have the experience of being in the heart and being in the external world. If you make this transition with care, every step you will stay here in the heart. And then as we go about our day, anytime that we find we're not here, we can just bring our awareness back. Just breathe into the heart, staying here. And the practice can become returning, just returning, returning to the heart. Of course, the idea is to be living here, not just visiting it once a day in meditation. And so this segue out or just layering in the external is a really great way to train that. And then we'll find that eventually we're starting to live in the heart more than we're living in the mind, right? And then the scales really start to turn. So then we're in the heart more often than not. And then we're not nearly as on the roller coaster ride that we are when we're in the mind. And eventually this meditation becomes a lot shorter and it doesn't have to take 10 minutes to get into your heart. It can be just connect with mother earth, connect with father sky, take a few breaths into the heart and you're there. It can get shorter and shorter. In the beginning, when we like are carving a path in the forest, it might take you know, numerous, it might take a long time to get from point A to B if it's like a jungle, but then we start walking that path, right? And then the pathway gets more worn and more easy to walk. So it gets quicker and easier. So does anybody want to share anything about their experience of going into the heart?
sure. Um, it was um, pretty, I was surprised that I found it more difficult than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, you know, I, I mean, I've tried, I've done practices similar before, but after, I don't know if it's just the headspace I'm in, but I just felt like, um, and it, immediately I landed somewhere, like you said, other people have said that somewhere I've been before <laughs> in meditations and, um, but it was dark and I, I said, you know, let, let there be light, but it, it didn't get too light. <laughs> it was pretty candle lit as well, as far as I got. And, um, I just felt, um, I felt, it felt heavy to me, you know, I felt heavy. So Interesting. I don't know. Yeah. The energy was heavy, not in a bad way. It was comforting. It was like being in a kind of a cocoon, you know. Um, but yeah, so it was. It was yeah, cool. I do hear that sometimes. That some people, it's more like a womb space, mm -hmm. and in that, it can feel a little dense, you, you know. And like, and also as we're just getting in there, it can take a little time to settle in, and to feel what's there to feel when you arrive. And even if in the, in the beginning there's emotions or things like that, it's like, oh, that's there to be felt and processed. And then it's a, it's a way to tap into what's in the heart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. I did uh, I'll let people know watching the recording that I did announce I was gonna record this so that maybe people, if they wanted to be shy to share, that they didn't need to share. So I appreciate you being brave and sharing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I wanna talk now about all the other pieces of this work. I really wanted to give you an experience so that you could take it with you in case I never see you again or you know, you just to have that so you can practice it. And just that can be so life-changing just to have that piece. Uh, but there's so much more in the workshop that it's worth kind of just going through the four days. And I'm just I'll explain a little bit about what happens in the workshop. And then we can talk about each thing that comes up uh, or if there's any questions about it. So I will say this about the workshop, this a four day intensive. Drum Below did design it to be the final workshop, like everything that a person needs to walk the path of ascension for this time. And he's not even concerned too much about the longevity of the school or if there's gonna be teachers moving forward or whatnot, because he does feel that this is information for this time. And in the future, things will change and there will be new teachers that come forth to share new information for that time. So this really is for right now. And it's condensed down into be just the basics that we need to be on the ascension path in an empowered sovereign way, you know, for now. There's so much more that he could talk about, and he does. He can't help himself either as an existential explorer and seeker. There's always more. And right now, he is finishing up two more books that will be coming out hopefully this year, but things often take longer than, um, than we think. And he's been writing these books for a long time, but I have actually been in contact with him regularly and he is coming to the end of these books. They're soon to go to the publisher and they are The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, volume three and four. And volume three is going to have a lot of the information that is in the Awakening the Illuminated Heart Workshop, covering some basics that are in the workshop. Of course, it doesn't necessarily um, take the place of the workshop because the experiential training that one gets to activate their Merkaba is kind of essential in a workshop so that we can troubleshoot all the things. But he's going to go over some of the basics because you really have to have an understanding of what is discussed in the Awakening the Illuminated Heart Workshop. So that way he can then talk about what he really wants to talk about, which is what's going to come out in volume four. Now, back in 2017, Drumbelow taught a workshop, or was it 2015? I'm not recalling, but it was called Cosmic Grace. And he only taught this twice. And it was like an advanced workshop that was going to come after the Awakening the Illuminated Heart, even though it was complete. There's still more stuff that we could geek out on and, and, and talk about. And it has to do with the Birkeland currents and the electrical nature of the universe using tantric energy and uh, traveling anywhere at the speed of uh, the present moment, really. 
and all kinds of interesting things. And then he taught that workshop twice and realized it wasn't complete. So he stopped at that time and went back into research. And for the past many years, he has been meditating. And he has told me that he's been more in meditation than he's been here on the, on the planet, really finishing this information and getting it into this book. And so that's what's going to be in volume four. And he really wants to be able to make that be understood, but you really have to understand the Merkaba and all the different pieces of the equation first. So both books will come out probably around the same time at, at each other, as each other. But nonetheless, this sort of primary work is in the uh, awakening, the illuminated heart. So in the workshop, we start with day one, which is the day of the opening. And we have a ceremony to invoke the higher self, like I talked about earlier, and really make that connection, which is quite profound. And we do some opening exercises. We do some partner exercises, exercises to open the heart. We review a lot of the material that's in the Living in the Heart book and ideas about getting into the heart. It's a little bit of a warm up and all the different exercises that we do. Some of them are related to Drumbelow's wife's school, the blue school, which is an imagery, imagery exercises, which are like stretching exercises that prepare us for unusual experience and interdimensional travel. So we do some of those exercises on day one as well. We also learn about breathing prana. And this is something that I think is one of the key parts of the whole workshop is that prana is source energy and it is everywhere. It's in the third dimension, it's in the fourth dimension. It's the God particles that kind of are behind and permeate everything, even if this is a simulation that's still here everywhere for us to plug into. And we learn how to consciously breathe prana specifically from the fourth dimension. The reason is because uh, the Merkaba that we'll talk about and activate on the last day is a fourth dimensional technology. It is the ship that will actually allow us to travel from the third to the fourth dimension. And the fuel for that is fourth dimensional prana. So we learn how to uh, breathe that in. And then we practice breathing it every day in the workshop to build up our store of it so that it can serve us on day four when we get to that part of the workshop. Okay, day two. Day two is the day of healing. And we spend the first part of the day talking about healing uh, belief patterns, which are huge. He, and when it comes to healing, the, the idea around belief patterns can't be understated because if we live in an unlimited universe, then what is limiting us, it comes down to our belief patterns. So we really get into that. And we talk about the, the ability to heal and quantum physics. And we talk about sound healing as well. What is sound? What are the chakra system, according to Drumbelow, the 13 chakra system based on the tetrahedral Merkaba and how are chakras like Merkabas? And if it's holofractal graphic, then as above, so below. And so we get into this nature where chakras are actually small, small spinning Merkabas and then it gets bigger from there. And then even planets have Merkabas. So the scale is relative as within, so without. And then we spend the second part of the day on day two, having a healing ceremony. And the idea is to heal any traumas around the heart because people can have trauma in their life, like divorce or a death of a loved one, these dramatic things that happen that are too intense to process at the time. And so our heart does, is, can't really process and feel them. So they stay outside of the heart and they can become like boulders that are these traumas and they can get in the way and keep us from actually being able to go down and go into the heart. And so we have a healing ceremony to clear and release anything that's lingering around that no longer serves us around the heart spaces, the two heart chakras. We have the lower universal heart chakra and the upper personal heart chakra. And we will clear and release any trauma that is ready to go by loving and serving each other in that way and having this uh, ceremony where we have 25 minutes of sending love and healing sounds to each other and letting all that go. So that is a, the day of healing. It's a really beautiful, deep ceremonial day in the workshop. Day three is the day of going into the heart. 
And we actually complete the healing ceremony on the morning of day three, because it continues through the night. This stuff sometimes continues to come up for people afterward. It's like the pot gets stirred. And then sometimes that night in their dreams or the next morning, things come up. So we have another smaller uh, healing ceremony on the morning of day three to complete it. And then we're ready to start going into the heart. It's like we've done all the prep work. So we'll do exercises where we practice traveling inside of the body so that we can get used to what it feels like to move in the body. And we'll travel into our hand and see if we can see with our hand and uh, do these different exercises to prepare. And then we'll start going into the sacred space of the heart, having that meditation, having those experiences, talking all about it. And then we'll actually go into the tiny space of the heart. Now, we didn't have time to cover that in this two hour class, but I will briefly say that in the sacred space of the heart, there's another space and it's called the tiny space of the heart. And this is the place that is the absolute oneness, unified God, singular place. Your tiny space and my tiny space are the same place. And we access that inside our sacred space of the heart. The analogy that I gave earlier of the sacred space of the heart feeling like a temple, like when I go into my own inner temple, well, then what happens once you're in your inner temple, if you go up to the altar or you go up to the inner, the shrine or these inner sanctum or the holy of holies, once you're there, the energy there is even more potent and more profound. It's like that's the energy in the temple that creates the sacredness for the whole space. And it's like that in the tiny space. It's more potent, it's more profound. And the sacred space, your personal space is the keeper of this smaller space that is sometimes only large enough for you to get into. And it is the place of God and oneness. And uh, and your higher self is really easy to get in touch with in the tiny space. And any loved one or do what your other meditations that may connect you to source, it's a really beautiful space. And so we work with that and we go into that space as well. Then also on day three, we're going to activate our beams of light. And the beams of light are antennas. They're psychic extensions that come out of your pineal chakra in various places on the head that allow a person to have their psychic sensing on. Now, the point isn't to be to get psychic. Like it's not advertised as a come get psychic workshop. It's a side effect and it's a really cool one. The point of activating the beams of light is it's the technology that we need to have online for the next day when we start putting everything together. And so that'll make more sense as we go. But we activate and plug in our antennas and people immediately start to become more psychic once they activate them. And then we learn how to take care of them and, and, and have them as part of our life. At this point, they feel like arms coming out of the head. They feel like parts of my being and my body. They're so real to me. So then on day four, where it's the day of the Merkaba and it's the day of creation. So what we learn about in the morning of day four is Tantra of the heart how to connect the heart. Now that we know how to get into the sacred and the tiny space of the heart, how do we connect that to our brain? In an awakened brain, awakened brain means that your beams of light are activated and your third eye is opened. So we have to actually work to open the third eye. And that's a meditation that involves the tip of the tongue on a very specific spot on the roof of the mouth that produces alpha waves in the brain. And when enough alpha waves are produced, we get light inside of the head and we connect all, it all together. We open the third eye, push it out so that we're actually perceiving into the external world from our third eye. And when we're in this state of consciousness where the heart and the awakened mind are connected, that's when we have the opportunity to activate our Merkaba. So let's talk a little bit about the Merkaba. Is you, the Merkaba is your ascension vehicle. It is the technology that we need to have activated to go from the third to the fourth dimension or to travel interdimensionally at all. It is an interdimensional vehicle. So if you die in this life, whether that were to happen at the end of your life or if it would happen because there's an ascension happening or some big grand event that a lot of us feel like maybe we're here for, if that were to happen and you don't have an activated Merkaba, that means you will die unconsciously and recycle into the reincarnation cycle again and again and again. And we keep dying and being reborn until finally one day we remember our Merkaba, which allows us to keep our memories intact when we die. It's like a field around us, a ship that 
is the same as the Earth's magnetic field. And our memories are held magnetically. There's a magnetic sheath around each brain cell. And so when we die and we uh, leave the Earth's surface, we then lose all our memories and everything. So once we have the Merkaba, that's it, we're free. We can die consciously and choose where we wanna go next. So this is huge. And, and if ascension were to happen, you are able to ride the ascension into the next dimension as well, consciously. So it's a very important. Uh, and the, the Merkaba is actually the most researched subject in the universe, says Drumbelow. Uh, maybe not on this planet, but overall in general. And there's lots of different Merkabas, one for each dimensional level that we're in. So whatever dimension we're in is the Merkaba that we are working with. And so when we align our heart to our mind in a certain way and come into coherence, our natural heart-based living Merkaba will come online. And once we activate it, it is permanent. It's not a meditation that we have to do every day. Now, this is the way that Drumbelow first started teaching the Merkava back in the 80s, because we weren't ready to activate it from the heart yet. And what will, what will we do if ascension were to come now? People aren't ready. The Merkavas aren't on. So he had the insight from his guides, and that is to teach people to do it synthetically, a Merkava meditation that they can do so that they can activate it and have it activated. But because it was synthetic is a meditation that you had to do every day uh, to keep it activated. And then in 2011, he created this new work because now we're ready to do it from the heart. Once you do it from the heart, it's permanent and you can't get it wrong like you could with the old way of activating the Merkaba. Many people, it was very complicated meditation and many people got it wrong uh, because it's just so complicated. And with this way, you don't have to know anything about tetrahedrons and the way they spin and breathe, breathing techniques and all that. We just align these two together and our natural heart-based Merkaba comes online. So it's very beautiful. And once that happens, it's like your feet are so firmly planted on the path of ascension that it changes who you are. And then we learn to program the Merkava. It's a, it's a living field around us. So we can actually program it to protect us or to serve us in some human needs and desires, even though that's not the main purpose, right? The main purpose is for dying consciously and for ascension. But nonetheless, we can program it. And we can also create external Merkavas around other spaces that are extensions of our own to protect our home or a ceremony that we're having out in the meadow somewhere like that. We talk and learn about creating external Merkabas. And then the workshop culminates in the final piece, which is learning to create reality from the heart. And we talked a lot about that today here, about the difference of creating from the mind and creating from the heart. So how do you actually do that? How do you create from the unified field in your heart? Well, there's a very specific meditation that is similar to the Merkava meditation that I just described of opening the third eye, aligning the mind and the heart together. And when everything is turned on, there's a way to take the images from your heart and let them come out into your field around you. Uh, where the hologram is projected and change the images on the screen and then you change your reality. So this is the final piece of the workshop as we learn how to create actually from the heart to create a life of grace. And so that's the four days, <laughs> it's a lot. And uh, I'll stop here and see if anybody has any questions or clarifications about any of that. Okay. So let's talk about some uh, details of the, the workshop. I facilitate this workshop almost once a month online. I never, it was never taught online. Drumbola taught us to do it in person. And only when things locked down, is it four years ago now? You know, I kind of had a workshop scheduled in about two weeks after everything locked down and nobody wanted to come out anymore. And I thought, you know, this information is more important now than ever. And I just figured it out. I was like, I borrowed a webcam. I figured out what Zoom was, you know, and I just tried it. I tried it to see if it would work. I didn't know if it would. And to my surprise, the workshop worked really well online, in some ways better than in person, um, because people are in the comfort of their own home. 
They didn't have to travel. And there's just a different level of relaxation and focus that happens. Now, it is true that it's lovely to do the workshop in person because you build community. There's that heart opening, um, just coherence that happens when you're in the space with people and people are sharing lunch breaks and hugs and talking. And that's really lovely, lovely and heart opening as well. However, I feel like the most important part of this work is to get it, is to get these activations, is to get these processes and have these as tools in our life. And if that can be done easier online, then great. It allows people to have attended the workshop with me from all over the world and it's less expensive. And so I'm a fan of it. Eventually, Drumbolo did give us permission to teach it online as long as we promised not to record it. And, and uh, I still do it. Most teachers have moved away from doing it online and do it just in person, but I love the online workshop. It works really well for people and uh, they just go deep. And I try to make it as warm and loving and engaging of an atmosphere as possible. So I'm doing it online, like I said, once a month and in person, just two or three times a year. The next one I have in person is September in 2024 here in Sedona area. And uh, I'll, I'll, do, or I'll do it more as needed as well. When Drumbolo's books come out, there may be a surge of new interest and I'll do more in-person in, in workshops as well. The online workshop is $377 and the in-person one is $488 because it just it's a little easier online and it's a little bit shorter, not much, but each day is maybe just like a half hour shorter. And they are um, 9 a.m. to about 4 p.m. Uh, on online or 3.30 p.m. in mountain time where I'm in the Arizona time zone. We don't actually change time zones right now. I'm on Pacific time. And then half the year I'm on mountain uh, time. And then in person, it's 9.30 to 5 p.m. And so uh, those are some of the basics of the, the workshop. And I'm always doing them. I'm always adding more to my calendar. And then once a month, I'm also doing this intro. And then I also offer support for after the workshop because I feel like this is such important work that I have a Facebook page just for people uh, who've done the workshop with me where I post things regularly and I also offer four times a year a refresher class a half day refresher so that people can revisit all these processes and tools and meditations and I just do that by donation four times a year just to kind of help keep it alive for people. So I'm living and breathing this. I love it a lot. And I'm happy to talk with anyone about it. I also do private sessions if people want to get more into this before or after the workshop one-on-one. -on -one. That's also an option. And all that information is on my website, violarose.com. So any closing comments, questions, anything you want to ask? Is that um, consecutive days, four consecutive days? They are. Yeah, they are. Uh, Drumbola recommends to do it four days in a row. And so I always do it over a weekend, but I'll normally do it like a Friday through a Monday or occasionally a Saturday through a Tuesday just to mix it up. And um, they're, they're, once in a while, somebody comes along and can't can only do on the weekend. And they would they ask me if maybe they could split it up and do it over two weekends. I am open to doing that, but it's really just one or two people who a year who want that and I've never had enough people to have that be a workshop but if yeah. anyone is interested in that just let me know I'll put you on a list and uh in order to be able to do it you know two days and two days over over the weekend but it hasn't happened yet <laughs> thank you yeah okay well I think that then that covers everything and uh I'm thanks for being here thanks for letting me kind of take on this journey with you to go into the heart. It's just the start. A, lo a lot of this information about going into the heart is in this Living in the Heart book, and you can find it anywhere. There's even an audio version. I just recently discovered that someone's reading it right on YouTube. <laughs> so okay. it's there to read for free. The, and the meditations in the back are there. If you resonate with the book, you would resonate with the workshop for sure. And, uh, and and so keep me posted if you want to hear any more. Yeah, definitely going to check out that book. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Viola. It's You're a, so welcome. It, it was a, a great meditation. Yeah, it's a, I like it. Yeah. Beautiful. Great. I'm glad. And thank you for being here. Have a beautiful time exploring living in your hearts. And we'll, we'll meet in the heart space. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
拜拜。